Have you ever been frustrated trying to find the perfect title sticker for your scrapbook pages, a card, or a DIY project, and find you just have too many stickers to go through, or you can't remember where you put them, and you wish they were just at your fingertips? Well, today I have a solution that is going to take your craft room organization to the next level and make it easier than ever to find just the sticker or title that you need. Hi, I'm Lauren and I'm the maker and creator behind Craft Some Joy and I am so excited that you are here on my channel. I have organization solutions for your craft room and I also have tips, ideas, inspiration for all things scrapbooking and creative memories. So today I want to walk you through how I solved the problem of being able to find just the sticker that I need when I need it. You may have caught glimpses of my title binder in other videos, and I'll link some of those videos here in case you want to check them out. But today we are going to dig into this organizational system, and it really is one of my favorite ways of getting my stickers organized and easily accessible and ready to use. So now when I'm looking for the perfect title for a two page spread, I can open my title binder and flip through and have a choice of laser cut titles, all the different sticker categories, or even vellum titles. So if I'm looking for a travel related title sticker, all I have to do is open my binder and flip to the tab that says travel and then I'll get to look at all the different stickers and look at the space that I have available for my title sticker and then I can kind of match the two with the word that I want to have and also the space that I have. So as I'm looking through some of my title stickers, I can just kind of picture what might go right here. And it could be getaway, but it really isn't kind of related to these photos that I have on my page. Um, adventure, that could be something. And then there's new discoveries. And actually this one is perfect on this trip. And this will make a beautiful title right here on my page in the space that I have. So you can see now how easy that was instead of digging through lots and lots of stickers, how I can just go right to what I need and get what I need for my two page spread. Okay, so let's take a closer look at exactly how I have my binder put together and what you'll need in order to put one together for yourself. So in order to create one of these awesome title binders for yourself, I'm going to walk you through some of the steps that you'll need to do in order to get set up. And first of all, of course, you're going to need a binder that you love. And these Blue Wilson Jones binders have been featured in a lot of my videos, and I do have kind of a stash of these. But unfortunately, they are not available. So my second choice, and I will make sure to have all the links for these products in the description, or you can also find them on my website at craftsomejoy.com under Shop My Favorite Things. And this is my second choice binder, and you'll see these in my videos as well because this is an awesome binder. It's also soft and flexible and does come in a variety of ring sizes. And in case you like that title sheet, you can also find that on my website too. So after you have your binder, you're also going to need a few other stationary supplies. And one is a pack of tabs for your binder. And I recommend getting two sets of these and make sure that they're the eight cut tab style. These are the ones that I've used in my title binder. They are white and clear so that you can just kind of see all the different uh, categories and titles that I've written in by hand. And they also have this kind of style uh, in colors if you'd prefer to have a colored tab. So I'll make sure to link these, but really any eight tab set will work for you. The other thing you're going to need is something that I found which was kind of a game changer as far as organizing in my craft room. And this was the Ultra Pro 
coupon saver starter pack. I absolutely love these organizers and I've used quite a few of them here in my title binder, but I also have a lot of other ways to use this pack for organizing your stash in your craft room. So if you're interested, there's some other videos I'll link here so that you can check it out. So I recommend getting at least one or two of the coupon starter packs because they have a variety of different sizes. And I'll get more into that in a few minutes. And you are going to need really the heart of the binder. And it took me a long time to find this double-sided sticker paper. And this paper is absolutely essential for organizing your stickers. And if you'll notice, this is coated on both sides and it is a thick, heavy weight sticker paper that's going to hold up to being used over and over again. And I used two to three packs of these uh, eight and a half by 11 size sticker backing paper. And again, I'll link these in my description and you can find them on my website. Now, I have also heard that there is a way to use paper and wax paper to create uh, your own sticker release paper, but definitely look into it and check it out. My recommendation after looking at many of them that were on the market, my favorite really is this sticker backing paper from Stickers and Stuff, and uh, I would recommend it. I've had no issues with this paper. So we're gonna take a closer look exactly how to use this as well. And then you're also going to need a few sheets of just plain white cardstock or a color, a neutral color, like a gray or a tan. And then if you go to my website and check out my blog post on the sticker binder, you will also find a link to my sticker binder categories. And this is going to be your cheat sheet for putting your categories together, kind of based on the stickers and titles that you have. So what I've done is kind of gone through a collection of my titles, created categories. And also I just wanna give a big shout out to Lori Hancock for helping me with these categories and also giving me the fantastic idea to put these in alphabetical order. Because then if you have those random little quotes or stickers that are just kind of on their own, now you have uh, alphabetical categories that they can go into as well. Okay, so once you have this printed out, you can grab a pen and take notes as we go through. And as you're organizing your stickers, you may want to change and add or rearrange these categories. And as always, these are suggestions. And so I encourage you to make this process your own and make it fit for what you have in your own craft room. So we're gonna take a closer look at how I have my binder put together, but also just keep in mind what you might have that you would like to add. So first off, I just wanna mention, I have my binder kind of broken into three different sections. I, in the front, I have all of my laser cut and kind of three-dimensional titles that I have all up front. And then in the center is where I have all of my sticker titles. At the back, I have my vellum titles. So my whole section of different vellum titles are here in the back. Now, again, your binder is going to be a reflection of the products and different things that you have. So these, again, are just suggestions. So here at the beginning, you can see some of those coupon organizers in action. And you'll notice that this is not a typical baseball card sleeve setup. These pockets are horizontal rather than vertical like the baseball card sleeves. And what I found is that they are perfect for titles. Now, the other thing I realized is that I have a lot of titles. And so what helped in creating more space from each one of these sleeves is to cut that white cardstock I mentioned that you needed to grab in just plain little white squares that fit each of these pockets. So now each pocket, instead of just being one pocket, once you slide that paper in, it now becomes the front and the back of the pocket. 
So you'll see that in action kind of as I flip through these different sleeves. And you'll see that there are a number of different style sleeves that will help fit exactly your different types of embellishments and titles. So again, here are the laser cut titles, and this is where you can see how adding that piece of paper has given me both the front and the back side of each sleeve. So what I have done is all these different packs that I've had kind of miscellaneous and tossed around my craft room. Now everything is combined into one place. It's all at my fingertips. Now, I probably could go back and even categorize these different ones in more uh, of a systematic category, but since there's really not a whole lot of this style, I just have them so that I can easily flip through and see what kind of titles and lasers that I have. Now, one thing I just want to mention here, instead of using a white cardstock, I chose to use gray since these laser titles were white. It was very difficult to see them on the white cardstock. So that's just a little tip if you want to go ahead and use a colored cardstock if you have anything light or white. Now, as we continue, you'll see I just have uh, each slot has its own title. And I might have different fonts or different colors, but the words are the same. So even though these are different styles of happy, they are all in my little happy pocket. So these are really my favorite, favorite way of storing laser titles. And it just gives a great way to just flip through at a moment's notice and see exactly what you have. Now, before we jump into my sticker categories, I just want to mention one other type of sticker, which is something that I love. And that's these sheets with all these little words on them. And since it already is an investment in time to put your sticker binder together, I would not recommend putting every one of these words into a category. Now, maybe you want to, if that's uh, something you have time for and something that you would enjoy, then go for it. But what I decided to do was add these kinds of stickers just in a sleeve in the front of my title sticker categories. So I still know if I need words, even if they're small words and different things, I can find them in my binder. Okay, so now as we're rolling through, I just want to kind of point out a few things. So wherever your stickers are in your craft room, one of the main things I want you to do is start gathering them. Go through all your different paper packs and collections and palettes and find all of these wonderful stickers because as you get into it, it's actually kind of fun to get in and organize and also see what you have. When I went through this process, one of the amazing things was that I rediscovered all of these amazing stickers that I had that I had forgotten about or that I had tucked away with a particular kit or palette and then never thought to use or never remembered to use. So now that they're here all organized, I reach for this binder over and over and over again when I'm working in my scrapbooks. So the first category, as you see, as we go down our list is some of these letters are together like A and B, and then some have their own category. And that was just because of the volume of stickers that I had. So this was kind of a process. I went through, found my stickers, added them to the pages and then kind of reorganized and categorized. So all that hard work is already kind of done for you. And all you have to do is make this your own. So again, as I mentioned, my first category is A and B, which is awesome, believe and birthday. Now I'll just point out here that sometimes there are categories that have other things that are grouped together with them. And birthday is a great example. So as well as birthday stickers, I'm also going to have party related themes. So it could be special day, here's to you, party time, as well as happy birthday. Now kind of what goes along with birthday and party is also celebrate. And so I did group that under the category of C because we do have a lot of C words like cherish 
and cute and captured. But we also have congratulations. And so we have a whole section here that is on celebrate, congratulate, and all of those fun titles. Cheers. So all of this, it's up to you. You can either separate it out by letter or you can group it all together that it's going to be under birthday or celebrate. So again, this is your choice. Now, while we're in this section, I also just want to point out one thing that I ended up doing in this process. And once you have all of these long uh, 12 inch stickers, and a lot of you may recognize this from old CM, old creative memories, is that um, once you peel all these off and put them into categories, you're going to have left a blank strip and then you can use these strips as inserts into your binder for strips that are long. So if you have some of these full 12 inch stickers, this is just one way you can look at solving the issue for how to capture those stickers. So you can see here, this one says congratulations. So what I did is I still just three hole punched this long sticker paper, but I, I lined it up so that it's even at the bottom and it all just sticks out the top of my notebook. So when it's on a shelf, it's not a problem that the top of my notebook is actually extended. Now, if that is an issue for you, another way that you can handle those longer stickers is to put them diagonally across a eight and a half by 11 page. But that does take up a lot more room because you have to kind of go from one corner to the other on these sticker pages. So again, your choice. So I think you kind of get the idea as I'm flipping through my binder, how this all starts to come together. And again, it depends on how many title stickers you have as to how full your binder will be and your categories. So one of the things I realized is that some categories definitely had more stickers than other categories. So I'm just going to kind of flip over here. And the way I handled these stickers, because I had so many love Valentines, together, hugs, our story, relationship, all of those different kinds of love stickers, I decided to make this its very own tab so that when I needed anything related to love or hugs or kisses, I could find it right here under my love tab. So I definitely recommend as you're kind of going through your stash, use this as a guide and then also think about what categories you might need to make larger or make their own section and kind of just how you want to address everything. Now, a couple other things in the sticker category that I want to address is that some of these, again, like birthday, are grouped together. And another one of those categories for me is kids. And so my kids category is also baby, child, um, anything that had to relate towards children or sweet or cute or baby, that all came into my kids category. Well, if you don't want to put it under K for kids, you could also put it under C for children. So again, that's just your personal choice. So another tab I just want to point out is my P and Q tab, where I have not only P words, which are perfect and precious, but sometimes you have stickers that you could put under a letter and say, okay, I could put this under S for sweet things, or you could consider it a quote. So I kind of think of these as general titles that if I'm just looking for something fun to say or cluster with embellishments, I could look under my quotes section. And this is also where I would put in some of my longer title stickers that really have a saying or a couple sentences rather than just a word or two. So that is under P and Q. Now, as we head over to the S tab, I want to point out that S is my seasons. And you know that I'm a big advocate of organizing by category and by season. And so I had to make one whole tab that was just related 
to my seasonal quotes. So anything spring related, anything summer related, anything fall related or autumn, and also anything winter. And so this is a perfect section for capturing all of those miscellaneous seasonal stickers. As we finish up the sticker categories, you'll find T is my travel section, which is where you saw I grabbed that sticker. And also I'll just mention that the wonderful thing about using the sticker paper is that once you've used it, you've not torn anything, you can use it over and over again. So even though there's a little bit of an initial investment in the sticker paper, I love the fact that once you have it, you really don't have to buy it again. You can just use it over and over. If you get more title stickers, you can just put them on as you use them, you get more space and so on. So the last category I have is kind of all the way from W to Z if you need it, but that's where we have wishes, yay, yippee, and you. And there's not a whole lot in those categories, but it is a place to catch all of those miscellaneous words and titles. So the very last category in my title binder is my vellum titles. And again, this is where we're going to pull in those coupon organizers because this is one of my favorite setups. These, I think, are made for those long coupons or even for currency to hold currency. But again, if you cut your white cardstock, each one of these pages now has six pockets instead of three. And this is the perfect place I found for all those miscellaneous vellum titles. And you can see I still have some to organize, but this is again one of those things that I just forgot about in my craft room. So now that I can see it and I can flip through and I know I have Christmas titles and different holiday titles as well as travel and vacation and family and all the different categories of these beautiful vellum titles. This has just made all of these products so much more accessible and a great way to get to these and pull them to use in your album. So as in the front of my book, I may end up recategorizing all of my vellum titles so that they're in a little more of an order. But again, that is a personal choice or you can just enjoy flipping through and kind of just seeing what you have. So that is my title binder in a nutshell. And I will admit it does take some time to put this all together. But I recommend just putting on a couple of your favorite shows and just digging in and doing the work to categorize it because afterwards, this will save you so much time when you're looking to find just that perfect title for your scrapbook pages, for a card, or for a DIY project. So I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial and you will have some inspiration to grab the supplies you need to create one of these binders for yourself. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out some of the other organizational videos that I have right here on my channel. You'll find I have a whole playlist of craft room organization that can just give you some ideas and inspiration on how to organize your own creative space. So until next time, I hope you take time to craft your joy, and also organize your joy. <laughs> okay, we'll see you in the next episode. Take care and bye for now.